Hey there, hope you're doing well. Today I wanted to delve a little deeper into frame rate independence and delta time movement. It's a subject that confuses a lot of people, and it took me a while to wrap my head around it when I first started out. I created this little demo that I think will illustrate the idea nicely, so let's go ahead and take a look. In this simple little game, we have a rectangle that will begin moving at a fixed speed once I press the spacebar. A timer will then keep track of how long it takes for the rectangle to get to the other side. It also displays the current frame rate, which right now is hovering at around 60 frames per second. So let's go ahead and press the spacebar and see how long it takes. It took about 1.6 seconds. Now let's play the same game, except this time instead of 60 frames per second, we're going to run our game at 30 frames a second. Let's go ahead and see what happens. So as you can see, it's already taking a lot longer, and it took 3.2 seconds, which is about double the amount of time it took when we ran the game at 60 frames per second. If we run our game at 10 frames a second, then we can see that this problem only gets worse. Now our little rectangle is just barely chugging along. So why is this happening? Well before we answer that question, let's go ahead and first understand what a game's frame rate actually means. All games are made with a game loop, which is a set of instructions that infinitely run until we tell them to stop. When we start from the top up here, go all the way to the bottom, and then loop back up to the top, we're going to denote this as a frame. So if our game's running at 60 FPS, we can essentially complete this cycle 60 times in one second. If we're moving our rectangle 5 pixels every time we go through the game loop, this means we'll be able to go at a rate of 5 times 60, which is 300 pixels per second. Now let's go ahead and limit our frame rate back down to 30 frames per second. This time, we're going to get a rate of 5 times 30, which is 150 pixels per second, and this is half of the speed that we were going before. If we can't hold a constant frame rate, then this is going to cause problems in games that rely on timing and movement, such as platformers. This might make our game randomly speed up or slow down, and even worse, it might make it unplayable due to the altered physics. You might be thinking, my computer's fast, it can run whatever frame rate I need it to, but what's going to happen if someone else wants to play your game? There's no guarantee that their hardware is going to be as fast as yours. And even worse, if you sell your game, you might have a bunch of angry customers. We want to design our games so that everyone can experience them, and we can do that by making use of time to control the physics of our game instead of the frame rate. What we'll do is calculate the delta time of each frame, which is a fancy way of saying that we'll see how much time has passed from the start of one frame to the start of the next. If we use this elapsed time as a physics multiplier, then we can essentially balance out our gameplay. If a player is able to get a high frame rate, it means that not much time is passing between each frame. So, we'll have a really small delta time value, which multiplied with the physics, will make sure that they're not moving too much every frame. On the other hand, players who kept out at a lower frame rate will have a higher delta time value, so multiplied, they'll be able to move a little bit more than their high frame rate counterparts. Using this approach, we essentially normalize our movement so it'll run roughly the same no matter what kind of computer you're using. So now let's go back to that little demo and fix our game using delta time. And one little caveat, Pygame does have a built-in clock, but for this, we're going to want to use the time module that comes in built in with Python usually. Using the module will give us a more precise version of delta time, and the more precise, the better. So if we scroll down a little, I have the formula that we'll use to compute delta time right here. Up here outside the game loop, I have the variable previous time, and I'm going to go ahead and initialize it using the time function from the time module. This will just go ahead and give the variable the current time. Now let's go inside the game loop. I have a variable, now I'm going to also equal that to the current time. I'll then compute the delta time value, which will be now, minus the previous time we took, and then we'll reassign the previous time to the current time. Previous time now holds whatever time it is when we start this frame, so we'll go through and execute all these instructions until we go up, down and loop all the way back to the top. We'll once again get the time and start in now, so when we compute delta time, this will be the start of the new frame minus whatever time it was when we started the previous frame. We can then use this value to adjust our movement, and we'll do that by multiplying our velocity times delta time. So now let's try running our game and see if this helped. And before I do that, I'm going to change this back to 60, but I'm also going to increase the velocity. And I'll explain why I do this a little later, but for now just roll with it. So let's go ahead and run our game, and let's see how long it takes this little rectangle to get to the other side. It took about 1.6 seconds. Now let's change our game back to 30 frames per second, and when we run it, we should see something that's fairly close. And yeah. If we try 10 FPS to simulate a dinosaur computer, we're still getting about 1.61, so it looks like everything's working. So as a true test, let's go ahead and just get rid of the frame rate cap altogether, and we're just going to go ahead and max out my CPU. So potentially, we're going to be able to get hundreds of frames. And it says zero on the FPS counter, but that's because I commented the Pygame clock, so there's no way to count the frames. 
So if we run this, we're still getting around 1.6, which is pretty close and they're all pretty consistent. So now that we've got it working, I wanna address some things that might come up while you're trying to implement Delta Time into your game. Earlier, I had increased the velocity value to 300. Let's see what happens if I change it back to five. Well, our little rectangle is gonna move really slow. And this is to be expected, because let's think about what's happening. We're multiplying a really small number, delta time, to our velocity, so it's moving very little every frame. And just to show that this isn't because of frame rate dependence, let's go ahead and run it again, except this time, we'll run it at 30. It's moving at the same speed, but it's still slow. If you're making a fresh game with delta time in mind, this isn't really a problem because you'll be able to calibrate it and you'll be able to set the velocity or whatever values you need appropriately. But what if you already have a game that you want to implement delta time into? Well, this is going to be a little trickier because you're going to have to change all these values. But here's a little trick you can use. Let's say for the sake of argument, I calibrated my game to run at 60 frames per second. So all my physics will work correctly as long as the game can hold 60 FPS. If our game is able to hold a constant 60 frames per second, that means that our delta time is always 1 60th of a second every frame. Our movement's going to change when we apply delta time to our velocity, but what would happen if we applied a constant 60? If you remember your fractions, you'll know that the 60 is going to cancel out with delta time. So we're going to be left with velocity, which isn't going to cause any problems because the velocity is already calibrated for a 60 FPS game. Now let's extend this even further and think about what would happen if our game suddenly dropped at 30 frames a second. 60 divided by 30 is going to reduce to 2, so we're left with velocity times 2. We cut our frame rate in half, and in order to compensate for that, what we're going to do is multiply our velocity by 2. So let's go back to our code and add another variable, which I'll call target FPS. And this is just going to be whatever frame rate you made your game with before it was frame rate independent. If you remember from the beginning of the video, with my velocity set to 5 and my FPS set to 60, the rectangle was able to clear time of around 1.6. So if I go ahead and add the multiplier, target FPS, let's see what happens. My game was built to run at 60 frames per second, but at 30 frames per second, using this multiplier, I'm still able to normalize it out and get it across at 1.6 seconds. Knowing this might help make things easier if you're trying to turn a game that's previously not frame rate independent into one that is. That'll be it for this video. Frame rate independence is a topic that can be a bit confusing, so hopefully I was able to help clear things up a little bit. If you learned from the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. That's always appreciated. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments or come join my Discord server. You can get help there or just hang out and talk with some other devs. I hope you stay safe and take care.